All right, here's points, slopes, and equations. In our last assignment in California, here I come, you saw that knowing two data points allows you to develop a linear model for population growth. This makes geometric sense because two points determine a straight line. Love that. When you actually wrote the equation, you may have worked primarily with the slope, meaning the rate of growth, and one of those points. This also makes, makes geometric sense because a line can also be determined by knowing one point and the steepness of the line, meaning the slope. The question in this activity, the questions in this activity are similar to your work in California, here I come, except that they do not involve population. Each question in part one gives you the slope, excuse me, in part one gives you the slope and one point of a line. Each question in part two gives you two points in a line. For part two, you may want to find the slope as a first step in writing the equation. Part three, examine special case, cases of horizontal and vertical lines. All right, well, let's get into it. Find an equation. Well, actually, here's what I'm gonna do just to start off. We know uh, our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is that rate of change or the slope equation, right? It's your change in y over your change in x. Find an equation for the line with the slope that goes through the point, three, two. Whoa, okay, well, let's think about this. If, do I have a, um, a little graph over here? I do have a little graph over here. If we've got a line, let's see, I'm gonna just draw an axis right here. If we've got a line that goes through the point, oh, this is actually not gonna be big enough. <laughs> of course. Um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, with a slope 5 that goes through the point 3, 2, we know from our previous work that the slope is the number that multiplies our constant variable. right? So when we had um, the coffee one, it would be the change in, in pounds of coffee times the number of days. When we had the traveling the distance one, it was the change in distance times the number of days. When we had our population one from this last one that I mentioned, California, here I come, we know that the, the equation was the change in population times um, the years. So we know that the slope is the change which is multiplied by some variable. So, um, I'm gonna, I know that if the slope is five, we're gonna have five times some variable, and I'll go five times t. And then, if we know that the point, the equation goes through point three, two, that's gonna take a little bit of thinking, right? So, let's think about it like this, if we have Hmm, actually, I really have to actually I have to think about this. There's a really specific type of format um, called point slope equations, where this gives us the slope. And if we know it passes through, man, hmm, let's think about this. Okay, so we know that that's our rate of, of change. And then, if that is the rate of change, we know, let's see, the point three comma two, so x equals three, one, two, three, and y equals two, one, two, we know that's gonna go right there, right? So this is the point three comma two. And we know that our, our slope means our steepness increases five every, every one. So if we go over one, it's gonna go up five, which is kind of a big jump. One, two, three, four, five, okay? which means that we're gonna go down a whole bunch. And our question is, well, how far far down are we gonna go to find where, where our function starts or what our function's value is when our x value is zero? Or I guess in this case, it'll be our t value because t is our independent variable. Well, let's see, at two, it's gonna go down one, let's see, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, so so then it'll be at two comma, whatever two minus five is, which should be negative three. Then if we go over one more, we're gonna go down five, which is gonna be, if we go over to one, and now we're gonna be down five, which will be three, negative three minus five is gonna be even lower, which is now negative eight. And then if we go one more over, we're now at zero, and we'll be at negative eight minus five, which is gonna be negative 13, not 12. So negative 13. So that means what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here and we're gonna go up 13 each time. Or no, sorry, we're gonna go up five each time, but start at negative 13. Man, that felt kind of clunky. I think there's an easier way to do this, actually. And we can call this y if we name this our y-axis up here. Okay, so now, we know that our slope is 10, meaning if we have some other equation, we know that y is gonna equal 10 times t, and it goes through the point negative four comma seven. Wow, 10 t, it goes up 10 every time. Well, let's graph it again. I'm gonna use, our graph paper this time. It goes up 10 every time, and it starts at negative four comma seven. Let's um, start over here. And let's see, we know negative one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Oh, that's, okay. Negative four, and it's gonna go up or, I'm getting so confused. Negative four comma seven. And it goes up 10 every time. So there's negative four. And um, I'm gonna make our scale go by tens. So seven is gonna be uh, right here. It's like one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's negative four comma seven. And if it goes up 10 every time, then at negative three, It'll be there, negative two, it'll be there, negative one, it'll be there, and then zero, it'll be up here. So let's think. So we know it's just gonna increase to negative three, negative two, negative one, and then zero. And then our y value, well it's just gonna be 10 more every time, right? So. 7 to 17, 17 to 27, 37, 47, which means our line, our, our function's value when x equals 0 is going to be 47. So what can we do with that? We can say it's 10 times t plus 47. Next, we're going to find an equation with the line. Actually, I wonder if I should skip these so that this video is not crazy long. You all can find out the next two. Haha. Part two, now we've got just these two lines. Actually, you know what? Hmm. I'm wondering if there's a better way to do this. Check this out. There's this, uh, there's this format called point, oh, let me put this in the thing, point slope form. And, and here's what it is. So careful with this notation. Point slope form says that you can take your y, sub, uh, and this is a variable. Oh, 
So y is a variable, and you can subtract a y1, and that's equal to your slope times x minus x1. Oh, I don't like how that got really dark. Um, now what you're going to want to be really careful of is, is that this is a variable. This always is just going to be a y. And this always is just going to be an x. When you write this for specific equations, you're going to change this one. You're going to change m, which is the slope. And then this x1 and y1 come from coordinates. So this will be your x1, y1. So as long as you know a point on the graph and the slope, you'll be able to write this whole equation. So let's look at this, but for this, uh, but for this formula. So it's not going to be in the y equals mx plus b form that we're used to, but it can be, I'm going to write a big or, this could be y minus y1, which if we choose uh, this point as x1, y1, our y1 is going to be 2. And that's equal to the slope, which is 5, times x minus x1, or x1 is 3. So believe it or not, these two equations are the exact same thing. Ready? We'll keep going. How about for this one? Or this could be y minus our y value, which is 7. And that's equal to our slope, which is 10, times our x variable minus negative 4. And what happens when you minus a negative? That's the same thing as adding. So this is going to be plus 4. And these two equations here are the exact same, but this one was way easier to figure out because we don't have to draw our graph. So let's try it for this one. This one is going to be y minus our y1. So negative 4. Oh, minus a negative. So that's plus 4. And that's equal to our slope of negative 3 times x minus 5. Oh, that's so much easier. Okay, and then last one. y plus 6 is equal to 2 thirds times x minus 4. Don't let this um, fraction fool you. You can multiply a set of parentheses by a fraction. Okay, part two. Remember the hint earlier said we want to find our slope in part two. So let's take a look at it. Our slope is going to be our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's going to be for this one. Let's see. Let's call this one um, point 0.1 and this one point 0.2. Actually, it doesn't matter which one is point 0.1 and point 0.2 as long as you stay consistent. So let's see, y2 is 8, y1 is 2, 8 minus 2, then x2 is 8, x1 is 6, and that's going to be, let's see, 8 minus 2 is 6, 8 minus 6 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that's our slope, right? The slope is the rate of change. And we abbreviate that as m a lot in math, as we saw when we pulled up this equation from Google. Google.com, of course. So let's put that in. Now, we can choose which point to use, right? Because a line, we just need a point and the slope. So that means we can use this point right here, or we can use this point right there. Let's write both. So the first one we know is going to be y minus 6, no, sorry, 2 is equal to our slope, which is 3 times x minus 6. 
And it's really important that you know that this is the exact same, so there's two right answers for this, as using this point, which would just be y minus our y, our y value, which is 8, is equal to, um, we'd have the same slope, right, because they share it, so 3 times x minus 8. This equation and this equation is identical. Pretty wild to think about. Okay, find an equation that, for a line that goes through this. Well, we know it's going to be our, let's see, let's call this one now. No, let's, we'll stick with the same. We'll call this one 1 and this one 2. So we say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that's going to be equal to negative 1 minus 5 divided by x2 minus x1, 3 minus 1. And that's equal to, let's see, negative 1 minus 5 is going to be negative 6. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 6 divided by 2 is 3, but since it's negative, it's of course negative 3. And that's our slope. M being a widely accepted term for slope. Then we can plug that into our point slope equation, which is going to be y minus, and I'm going to use this one, 5 is equal to negative 3 times x minus 1. Remember, you could also, of course, use this point as well. So it would be y minus negative 1. So y plus 1 equals negative 3 times x minus 3. OK, then last but not least, let's calculate our slope. Um, and we'll just stick with this same idea that that one's 1, that one's 2, which I always like to label or else I'll get lost. So we've got y2 minus y1, so 5 minus 2, 5 minus 2 of x2 minus x1, so negative 2 minus negative 7. And we know that when we minus a negative, that's, po that's adding them, right? So this is actually 5 minus 2 over negative 2 plus 7. And then 5 minus 2 is 3. Negative 2 plus 7 is 5. And that's our slope. Then we can use some points. Let's use, let's use this one this time. Um, and our, our, our formula is going to be y minus our y value, which is 5, is equal to our slope, which is 3 fifths, times x minus our x value, which is negative 2. So x minus a negative is a positive, so x plus 2. And there's your answer. OK, let's check out part 3. I know this video is getting long. But if you're watching it, it means it's helpful. OK, also, sorry about this one. I copied it. I took the picture very blurry. Find an equation for the horizontal line that goes through the point 5, 1. What's the slope of this line? Well, let's think about that. That means a horizontal line, let's see if this is a graphing point, and we've got, let's call this um, 5, and then this point right here, 1, which means we have a horizontal line that goes through this point, which means it looks something like this. Right? It's this horizontal line. Well, what's it changing? How, how is its, um, what's its rate of change? Does it change at all as it increases? Like if this was uh, x equals 3, has it gone up or down? No, it hasn't changed, which means uh, that its change is 0. And we can even prove this for a minute. Right, so let's think about this. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's going to be, let's see, we'll call this one, we'll call this one point 0.1, this one point 0.2. So our y2 is 5, and our y1 is 5. So we've got 5 minus 5 over our x2 is 3, and our x1 is 1, so 3 minus 1. 5 minus 5 is 0, 3 minus 1 is 2. What's 0 divided by 2? 
Well, that's just zero, and so that would be our slope. Okay, so if we took that and used the same uh, thing we've been using, we could say, well, uh, y minus, and we can use, let's use this point, so 1 comma 5. Oh, you know what? Hey, just a disclaimer. I read this as 1, 5, and then went along with it. So this is actually not for 5, 1. This is for 1, 5. Feel free to change that in your packet so it's not confusing. Uh, this is going to be y minus our y value, which is 5, is equal to our slope, which is 0, times x minus our x value, which is 1. Then we get this. Well, 0 times some quantity in parentheses, even if it's a variable, is going to be 0, right? We know that this term turns into 0. So if we solve, work this with our arithmetic a little bit, we get that y minus 5 is equal to 0. And then we can actually solve this for y by adding the 5 to both sides. And we get y is equal to 0 plus 5, which is 5. And that makes sense, right? Because our y value is always equal to 5, no matter what. So this right here is our equation for a horizontal line. It's where y has a constant value, not a constant rate of change, but a constant value. And this next one's going to be similar. So now we've got a vertical, right? So that one was for a horizontal. This next one is for vertical. And I'll use the proper points this time at 2 comma negative 6 for a vertical line. So let's look at 2 comma negative 6. We graph this here, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2 comma negative 6. We'll call this as, that's 2, that's negative 6. And it's a vertical line. We could figure this out the same way we just did. Um, and it actually uh, would give us a fraction that has 0 on the bottom, right? Because the x's don't change, which is actually an undefined function. So this is kind of a funky, uh, oh wait, what is the slope of this line? 0. It's kind of a funky. Um, example. We know that no matter what, your x value is always going to just be equal to 2. And you can tell because it's a vertical line. Uh, if your y is negative 5, your x is still 2. If your y is a million, your x is still going to just be equal to 2. So we can actually label this as x equals 2, and that is our function. But if we find our slope for this line, um, Let's do it. We'll, uh, we know that this goes through uh, 2 comma 0 as well, so you will use these two points. We could do, um, let's see, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that's going to be, let's call this one 2, and we'll call this one 1. If we have our y2 is going to be negative 6 minus our y1, which is 0, over x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is also 2, we get that this is, let's see, negative 6, divided by 0. Um, one thing that should always trigger your, your math warning lights uh, is when you divide by 0. Uh, dividing by 0 actually breaks math. You just, you've, you've done it. Um, and so when this actually comes up, this is not even definable. Like, it's mathematically impossible to break something into zero um, parts. And so, um, it's like, in all of numbers, this is not even definable. We can't even talk about it, which actually means that this is undefined. And that is what the slope is. You would call that as your slope is undefined. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching this super long video.